Dr. Sage here, back to continue our discussion on viruses and prion. In today's video, we're going to discuss the modes of viral multiplication. By the end of this video, you should be able to diagram the six-step life cycle of animal viruses, define the terms cytopathic effect, and provide one example, provide examples of persistent and transforming infections, describing their effects on the host, and provide a thorough description of the lysogenic and lytic bacteriophage infections. So the general phases in the life cycle of animal viruses are adsorption, penetration, uncoating, synthesis, assembly, and release from the host cell. Here's an example using an RNA animal virus, in particular, the HIV virus. We begin with adsorption. That's where the spike proteins on the virus recognize a structure on the surface of the animal cell. With this particular virus, the membrane of the virus fuses with the plasma membrane of the cell. So then the contents of what was inside the membrane then can then be brought into the cell. HIV is an RNA virus that's a retrovirus. So what that means is its genetic material is in the form of RNA. Viral RNA and reverse transcriptase are released into the animal cell. The reverse transcriptase of the virus takes the RNA and does reverse transcription, so it makes DNA from the RNA. The viral DNA is then transported into the nucleus and the viral DNA integrates into the host genome. New viral RNA is then used as genomic RNA and to make viral proteins. New viral RNA and proteins move to the cell surface and a new immature HIV forms. The virus matures when protease releases the proteins that form the mature HIV. So the first step is adsorption. Invasion begins when the virus encounters a susceptible host and adsorbs specifically to the receptor sites in the cell membrane. Notice this term is familiar to a term you might have heard in your daily life, absorb. So adsorb and absorb are not the same thing. Adsorb is to attach like a virus. Absorb is to soak in like a paper towel. And regarding host range, a virus can invade its host cell only through making an exact fit with a specific host molecule. Restricted host range, for example, hepatitis B only affects liver cells of humans. And we have moderately restrictive host range, for example, polio virus infects intestinal and nerve cells of primates. And then we have broad host range. For example, the rabies virus infects various cells of all mammals. Then we have penetration and uncoating of animal viruses. Endocytosis, that's where the entire virus is engulfed by the cell and enclosed in a vacuole or vesicle. Uncoating is where the enzymes in the vacuole dissolve the envelope and capsid, releasing the virus into the cytoplasm. So for example, the influenza virus that causes the flu is taken in by a target cell through the process of endocytosis. So it wraps this plasma membrane around this virus and it continues to wrap around it until it brings it into the cell in a vacuole or vesicle. Then the uncoating happens where the nucleic acid of the virus is released into the cell. Here's a different example. So with the HIV virus, it's not brought in by the process of endocytosis. Instead, after it absorbs, the membrane of the virus fuses with the plasma membrane. So the membrane of the virus becomes now part of the plasma membrane of the host cell. And in doing that, the contents are then released into the cell. Synthesis is replication and protein production. Viral nucleic acids take control over the host synthetic and metabolic machinery. The mechanism varies depending on whether the virus is a DNA or an RNA virus. RNA viruses replicate in the cytoplasm, whereas DNA viruses replicate in the nucleus. Then we have release of mature viruses. Envelope viruses are liberated by budding or exocytosis. Nucleocapsid binds to the membrane. A small pouch is formed. Pinching off of the pouch releases a virus with its envelope. Viruses are shed gradually without destruction of the cell. Now viruses can cause damage to the host cell. These are called cytopathic effects. Virus induced damage to the cell that alters its microscopic appearance. Cells can become disoriented, undergo major changes in shape or size, or develop intracellular damage. Inclusion bodies are compacted masses of viruses or damaged cell organelles in the nucleus or cytoplasm. Syncytium is the fusion of multiple host cells into a single large cell containing multiple nuclei. All right, so here's some examples of cytopathic changes in selected virus-infected animal cells. 
So if there's no virus, the animal cells grows on a plastic surface, line up in a single layer with tight connections between them. If it were infected with a polio virus, the cells are killed completely. They shrink, detach from the surface and lice. If it's infected with adenovirus, the cells round up and partially detach from the surface, and they tend to clump together. If it's infected with respiratory syncytial virus, the adjacent cells fuse together, forming a large cell with many nuclei, originating from the former single cells. This multinucleate cell is called syncytium. If it's infected with the rabies virus, the viruses can cause formation of inclusion bodies in either the cytoplasm or nucleus of the host cell. Rabies virus infected cells accumulate structures called nigiri bodies in their cytoplasm. Persistent infections are a carrier relationship that develops in some cells. Cell harbors a virus and is not immediately lysed. Provirus is viral DNA incorporated into the DNA of the host. Chronic latent state is periodic reactivation after a period of viral inactivity. There are oncogenic viruses. These are viruses that can cause cancer. Experts estimate that up to 13% of human cancers are caused by viruses. Transformation from a normal cell to a cancerous cell can involve viruses carrying genes that directly cause cancer, or a virus produces proteins that induce a loss of growth regulation in the cell. There are also viruses that infect bacteria. These are called bacteriophages. They were discovered in 1915. They are parasites of every known bacterial species and they often make the bacteria they infect more pathogenic for humans. The T even bacteriophages infect Escherichia coli or E. coli, that would be for example T2 and T4. These are the most widely studied bacteriophages and they go through similar stages as animal viruses. So a virulent phage shows only the lytic cycle. So first you have attachment where the phage attaches to the surface of the host cell. Then you have penetration, that's where the viral DNA enters into the host cell. Biosynthesis, that's where phage DNA replicates and phage proteins are made. Maturation is where the new phage particles are assembled. And then finally, lysis is where the cell lyses or breaks open, releasing the newly made phages, killing the cell. A temperate bacteriophage has both lytic and lysogenic cycles. So in this case, the phage infects a cell but the phage DNA becomes incorporated into the host genome, the chromosome of the bacteria. The cell divides, so the prophage DNA is passed on to both daughter cells. Under stressful conditions, the prophage DNA is excised from the bacterial chromosome and enters the lytic cycle. In that case, the phage DNA replicates and phage proteins are made, new phage particles are assembled, and then the cell lyses, releasing the newly made phages. So the bacteriophage life cycle can be the lytic phase, which is the life cycle of bacteriophages that end in destruction of the bacteria cell, or the lysogenic cycle, that's where the bacteriophage becomes incorporated into the host cell DNA. So lysogeny is often called the silent virus infection. Temperate phages have the ability to undergo adsorption and penetration, but do not immediately undergo replication or release. Prophage is an inactive state in which phage DNA is inserted into the host chromosome. And induction is activation of a prophage in a lysogenic cell to progress directly into the viral replication and the lytic cycle. The danger of lysogeny in human diseases, occasionally phage genes enter in the bacterial chromosome cause the production of toxins or enzymes that cause pathology in the human. Lysogenic conversion is the acquisition of a new trait from a temperate phage and is responsible for the diphtheria toxin, cholera toxin, and botula toxin. So if we compare bacteriophage and animal virus multiplication, we have adsorption. In bacteriophage, that's precise attachment of special tail fibers to the cell wall. In animal virus, it's attachment of capsid or envelope to the cell surface receptors. We have penetration. In bacteriophage, that's injection of nucleic acid through the cell wall and no uncoating of the nucleic acid. With the animal virus, the whole virus is engulfed and uncoated or a virus surface fuses with cell membrane and nucleic acid is released. Synthesis and assembly occurs in the cytoplasm and bacteriophage or occurs in cytoplasm and nucleus and animal virus. Bacteriophage involves cessation of the host synthesis, as does the animal virus. Bacteriophage viral DNA or RNA is replicated and begins function, as is with the animal virus. And the viral components are synthesized in both the bacteriophage and the animal virus. In regards to viral persistence, bacteriophage has lysogeny. Animal virus has latency, chronic infection, and cancer. The bacteriophage 
releases from the host cell, when the cell lyses, when viral enzymes weaken it. In the animal virus, some cells lyse, envelope viruses butt off the host cell membrane. As far as cell destruction, that can be either immediate or delayed in both the bacteriophage and the animal virus. This has been your introduction to the modes of viral replication. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.